One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. Link is in the description. It's been it's been so long since I did one of these day recap guys. It's, it's, it feels good to be back, man. It feels good, guys. The, um, for those that do not know, so I started recording already. For those, so today is Thursday, January 14, 2021. It's been a while since we did one of these daily recaps. The intent of the daily recap is to educate. Uh, we can probably do one of these all the time, but you know, the, the whole point of this versus the IG lives and the moderator mentor videos is this goes into way in depth. And there are lots of lessons. Whenever I feel like there's a big lesson to be learned, that's when I do one. And so today, this is pretty much uh, my agenda. So what I did today was, man, I, I made a bad mistake. I got greedy. I got, I got beat up on DPW, which I'll show you all this stuff. In pre-market, I lost. And then I wanted to show you how I mentally recovered back and made my money back and then, and then some more. Um, so a couple of things. So this is the agenda, guys. Uh, the main thing I want to talk about also is first red day. And also low float plus SSR plus ETV, easy borrow plus SSR, which is the DTSS place. So there's a couple great um, things we're going to talk about today. Okay. So with that, let's just jump into it. There's really no format, guys. You guys can ask questions, and then I'll stop, and then at the end, doesn't matter what, what you guys want to do. So let me show you what I did first today, guys. So uh, today, today I got a little excited because I woke up this morning and take a look at this nasty chart on DPW. So I got really excited on DPW, man. Uh, yesterday they had some news or whatever, and then it jumped at 680 and started fading down all morning, guys. So I'm like, holy crap, once again, FOMO, FOMO. I was like, dude, I, I need to get in. I need to get in. So when it started going down to 540 line, when it started to come down this morning, let me see, it's at 7 a.m. So 7 a.m. is around here. So I shorted it. I shorted it at the $6 line. You see that, guys? So usually a good place to, to have a good short is a whole number. So the whole number is 6 bucks. So that's why I went in and I just made my normal 20 cent scalp and then it started going down more. And I was like, Oh my God, I have such FOMO. This is, this is where the mistake starts guys. The mistake starts as I, you know, I, I got my, my, my order in and I made my money and I kept on going down and I have so much FOMO. I'm like, why didn't I hold? Why did I hold? And this happens all the time guys. And if you take a look what time it is, this is all market time. So it's still way early, dude. It's not even eight o'clock yet. It's not even eight o'clock yet. And I already got FOMO. So what I did was, I started placing bigger size classic trap formation. Shot up 420 and started to go down. See, it shot up to 420 and started to go down. And so I'm like, dude, this thing is a huge opportunity because this is the process that we teach. We teach wait for the top to be set and then you scale the short at the resistance line. That's exactly what I did. I nailed this play perfectly. I nailed it. I top ticked it around the four, 380 and 390 line right here. And I covered right down to the bottom. I did, I, you know, I, this is exactly what I did, uh, what I do all the time. Wait for the top to be set. When it bounces, I short. That's why I get top ticks a lot, guys. I use the lines, I draw my lines, and then, you know, I. Based on experience, I know which ones are better lines than not. So that's why I top tick this and I kind of like scaled down. Um, you you can choose to have one bullet. I just kind of scaled up the way I scaled up. I am not the perfect trader, guys. I'm a control freak. I like to take money off to cushion myself for the later of the hold. Sure, I can wait for the bottom, but that's not how I trade. I'm more conservative. I like money in my pocket. I lost so many times that I've missed covers by one penny trying to get the tops and the bottoms. So now I scale to just get the average. 
Um, you should try it on your own. Which one works better for your personality, guys? There's, to me, there's no right or wrong answer to trading like this. You know, there's a technical right and wrong. Risk, reward, technical, but we, we are humans, man. It's so hard to control our emotions. This is why traders fail. They cannot control their emotions. So you have to find something that you can control your emotion, even though it's not technically right. If you take a look at golfers, sports, basketball, there are people that don't have perfect swings that shoot the ball so awkwardly, but they get the job done. You know, they have to... They have to be comfortable, whatever they do. So for training, for me, what, what I'm a control freak, so what makes me comfortable is taking some off early so that I'm, I'm cushioned for the rest of the hold. So I don't, I don't have this anxiety. I'm a very anxiety-filled human by, by nature. And so by scaling, I get a little piece early so I don't have FOMO anymore. That's why I piece in a little so I like, whoo, I don't miss it. Because what's gonna happen is if I miss this by a penny, I am going to be so mad, it's gonna ruin my day. Then I'll be looking to revenge trade, to do a makeup trade and all that. And that's what happened with DPW, man. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at my investing club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot, it is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up, back to the video. Let's see, so yeah, I go back to the screen, let's see what this number is. This is around 390 line, 392, 390. Then there's a bottom here too, so 380. So between there, if it's going to trap, it has to be here because it'd be too low. Like, remember I keep saying there's too much volume. Too many longs are stuck up here. And when it deviates from this, shorts now keep hem hammering it. So to me, this stock, if it needs to be saved, it's gonna gotta be saved soon. It's gotta be saved at this line or this line. Underneath that, in my opinion, short on all pops, at the resistance line. Because the chart now has been formed, I know where to take stops. So from here to here, if I was entering here as a short, if I short here, I would place a stop, maybe 10 cents above this because the next one is too far away. If it's too far away, why am I holding for a 60 cents loss for an ad? Take the loss, Wait again to reshort the 480 line. I fucked up on the covers of CNET. Really blown this. This I was too focused on plug and all this stuff. And then when the zombie rule hit, I was like, so like I said, man, there's so many stocks, guys. There's so many stocks to trade. If I'm trying to nail 10 stocks, I will fuck them all up. This is a bonus, you know. So you focus on the top three you want. And then, you know, you either, and you concentrate on that. I didn't look at this stock at all. I was focused on plug. I was focused on other stocks, the TSS, right? Um, I fucked up. I should have focused on this. Sometimes you don't know which one's the best ones, which was not, right? Um, but look at what Alex wrote. It never hit 350, but here, he's looking at 320 to scale. That's exactly what I did. I started scaling at 320, and I covered the VWAP, and I just covered down here. And I was like, okay, I walked away. I don't know. I'm like, dude, I, this stock should have been up there. But what, what, I was scared of this stock. I'll tell you why I was scared of this stock. This is, the, this is what you should spot, guys. This, this is what I used to do on pink sheets and OTC penny stocks. I, I try to scan for these type of plays. And this, you know, this is it. Some weird formation. It drops down the SSR. But you know what, man? You could be chasing these and never hit. But if you're a long bias trader, put a stop, hard stop out there, you're fine. But when I look back and I see this, this is a hindsight. It's easier to go in hindsight to spot these. Obviously, at the real time, it's very difficult to spot. So don't, don't think that people can spot this easily. Don't think that you have an algo to do this. Maybe we can in the future have a scanner set up to do this, to, to spot unusual activity, and you kind of track it. And what, what happens is this. People don't realize that you can use a stop, a stop to trigger a buy. 
when you are not even in the stock. People think that you only use stops to exit your position. You can use it to enter a position. It's all the stop says is if it hits this price, either buy or sell, depending on what, you know, stop. You buy or sell, you can do stop and buy or sell. So you can have trigger buys, okay, when it happens. There's a difference between a limit and a stop. The stop, I could do a market stop, meaning like when it breaks that price. So example would be this. I'm looking at the pre-market high of this day. This is DTSS. And say, hey, it breaks this, something's unusual, I can buy it. If I had spotted this, I'm just making this up, right? I, 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 this is a, I'm not this good, guys. <laughs> no one's this good because you have to be able to predict this and there's no way. This is easy in hindsight. But I'm just saying, I'm just giving an example of how you use a stop to buy. I can say, it's three bucks, it breaks three bucks, three ten, buy it. And then that's the stop. Plug is very rangy. Be careful in the sizes. My plan is to cover $64 around the, and around the SSR, $62.55. So how do I calculate SSR? What well, SSR is, once it triggers SSR, short sell restriction is this. The previous day's closing, closing price was $69.50. Previous closing price, $69.50. So I take $69.50, multiply by 90% because SSR triggers on 10% down only at the general market session, not pre-market, not after market, right? Times 0.9. That is a triggering price. So basically that's 10% lower. 10% lower from the previous day is this. So if it hits this, it will trigger SSR. And usually when it triggers SSR, there's a bounce. That is, that is a tip that you guys should learn. Always cover some, don't need cover all, cover some at least at this trigger. Because a lot of the times it will hit this exactly. And you think, whoa, it's a coincidence. No, dude, the algo is planted. The algos hit this just to trigger SSR to squeeze all of the chasers, all the shorts that chase. Sometimes they flush the stock to SSR to get rid of the longs for the next leg up. Because if there's too many longs, they are selling. Too many sellers, right? Remember, longs are natural sellers. Shorts are natural bidders. To get to the next leg up, they need to clean the stock. So they wash it sometimes down to SSR. That's why you see, you know, we do these calculations all the time, man. And I see exactly the bounce below the day is right here. It could have been better if I covered here, but it was too late, guys. I, it, it was so damn fast, guys. I was saving it for the SSR area. I thought it was going to blow down here underneath. So I saw this. I did not cover because I got greedy. I wanted... The SSR, which is 62.55 to cover the rest, the third, the rest there, that's, that's good. It's fine. So we went back up. I took the same short at the 67 line. And then look at the clock. Oh my God, 10 minutes until zombie. Get the hell out, bow, ding, 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 ding. Get the hell out, get the hell out. You do not need to wait until zombie hour to get the hell out. This thing started a zombie before 10.30. When I realized that they are... The WAP reclaiming, I need, and then I looked at the clock. I need to get the fuck out. If this was under VWAP at this time, I would not be scared. I would have held it for the SSR cover. But the fact that it is over VWAP, heading into zombie hours, what do we say about hovering? This thing is not, not only hovering, it's over VWAP. Over VWAP, heading into zombie hours, cover the fuck up. It's not worth it. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.